sponsored by Squarespace. Ever since I made the first video about this approach, hundreds if not thousands of people from absolute beginners to pro painters all over the world have tried to replicate it and also love the results. But because a lot of people that watch the videos still can't believe that amazing results like this can be achieved in very little time, we are putting this technique to the ultimate test. How fast can it get shit done? This is my favorite way to paint right now, simply because I can cover so much ground very quickly while the result still looks super unique. And I especially love it because it's so versatile, even though we are just using acrylic paints and brushes. No fancy gimmicks, well, except sponges, of course. But you don't have to purchase any additional product like oil or animal paints, no streaking grime, and you can avoid all the aggressive thinners that you have to use to work with them. And the good thing about this way to paint is that it's also looking amazing on the table, simply because we have a lot of options to push the contrast and make the edges more pronounced. We can vary the amount of layers, we can add more or less weathering, and it's just really fun to have this versatility all in one painting approach. And because I will be timing this, we might as well make this video the next iteration of the Technique Breakdown series. So besides speed, I will also give you my take on how approachable this is, how the end result holds up, whether or not it's fun to do, and how it all compares to other ways of painting. So let's start this clock and get right into it. Generally, the bigger a miniature, the easier it is to apply this technique, because we can just use the sponge a lot more on these larger surfaces, and we don't have to switch to the brush as much, because there's fewer hard to reach areas. So in theory, we should have an easier time on a Terminator than on any other Space Marine. As always, I'm starting from a base layer of a mix of Rhinoxide and Morphing Brown, and my mix is about 50-50. This works for most colors. On red, I had to start a bit darker, and on black, I went a bit lighter, for obvious reasons. But if you are unsure, you can always consult might become a Space Marine Painting God video, which I will link in the description. I run this mix through the airbrush, but of course you can apply this by hand, or you can pick a brown primer of your choice to skip the black primer and speed things up. I want my Space Wolves to be dark and gritty, so I have to stray from the more typical baby blue colors a bit. And here you can see that I mixed ashing gray and gray blue and then started to apply the mix with a sponge. The way I apply these irregular layers is that generally I make them more dense in areas that wouldn't get a lot of wear and tear and let more of the base color shine through in areas like the edges that are more prone to being banged out. This way of painting not only makes for great battle damage, the great looking irregular pattern of paint buildup also looks like the paint has been exposed to heavy external influences for years or decades, and it is starting to show. I'm continuing to just dab on the sponge that is well soaked with undiluted paint until I cover any parts of the mini that I can properly reach. However, some parts just lie too deep and the sponge is also too large to reach the smallest recesses on the mini, like on the feet where the armor has this extra scaffolding. So eventually I'm switching to an old brush and stip all the parts I couldn't reach with the sponge. You can leave the paint build up the way it is, where there's more brown showing in the recesses and say that it's maybe some corrosion build up, it's really up to you what you prefer. Personally, I feel like these deeper areas need to be more pristine because I see the areas where brown is still showing as parts that have been dinged by mechanical forces and the paint slowly chipped away. I also make sure that areas of the mini that I want to highlight are covered in more consistent layers of this base color, so that I'm not stippling the highlight color over the brown, which messes with the brightness I want to achieve. Then eventually I added more gray blue and stippled on my first highlight layer. I'd say this is a ratio of one part ashen gray and two or three parts gray blue, as I want to reserve the pure gray blue for my brightest highlights. As you can see, I'm starting with the sponge again, dabbing on paint in these easier to reach areas, and I'm going for a senator light and volumetric highlights. Adding more and more gray blue to the highlight color brings back some of the more bright blue qualities of the typical Space Wolf's armor, and everything is slowly coming together. I'm focusing the brighter colors to areas like the helmet, which is what I want to draw attention to, and I make sure that there isn't too much speckling in the highlights, because it would just reduce the perceived brightness, which is obviously bad if we want our highlights bright, and it also makes everything a tiny bit too busy in this confined area. Eventually, as I move into pure blue-gray, I also let some of this paint run into the recesses, 
They basically are inverted edges that would also catch some highlights. It's up to you if you like that approach or if you prefer to darkline these parts. I just felt like trying how it looks and again my reasoning is that mechanical wear would not necessarily reach these parts so they look more pristine. Now with this technique sometimes you lose a bit of the desired effect of darker edges and that's why I'm using some pure rhinoxide to bring them back out. I pick up some underluted paint with the brush, let it dry a bit and just run the broadside across all of these edges sometimes pressing down harder and sometimes less hard and then sometimes I skip parts completely. As usual, going for a controlled chaos approach to keep it credible. Let's pause here for a second and let's talk about one of the categories that I'm evaluating these small projects on and that is the fun factor. And really there's only one score that is appropriate here because to me this is the definition of enjoying miniature painting. Just getting in there, slapping some paint around, everything you do has a direct impact. If I add a highlight with the sponge that area not only gets brighter but there are also is some structure visible right away and I already prepared the surface for any chipping that I want to add later because these raised parts grab onto any of the chipping color that I will apply later. But I have one more thing to show you before I give my final verdict on the fun factor. I knew I wanted to do a lot of freehands on this because I just love the interaction of the blue-gray armor with the yellow, red and black markings that are so typical for 40k space walls. At first I thought I'd outline the edges of the patterns with masking tape and then stipple the color on so I could get sharp lines besides applying irregular layers with the sponge. However, masking a straight line over a spherical object isn't as easy as it might seem and I didn't want to waste any time trying to figure this out. So I said to myself, fuck it and just went ahead and built this yellow stripe by brush, mimicking the patterns a sponge would leave. I built the bulk of the stripe with a mix of bronze brown, which is your generic dark beige yellow, and flash kits yellow, and then added highlights with pure flash kits yellow. Whenever it was needed, I made the yellow a bit more banged up with grace and some rhinoxide, especially towards that lower edge of the shoulder guard, and then added the wolf deco. As I'm doing these other freehand elements, I hope you realize how much fun this is for me. Just imagine the pressure of having to place every brushstroke perfectly, completely evaporated, because it literally doesn't matter. All I want to achieve here is an irregular pattern and there's no right or wrong. Just slapping paint onto a mini and achieving a great effect with very little effort. And the same goes for the stylized black teeth of this pattern. I just make sure that I have them spaced out neatly by painting the middle line first before I fill in the triangles. If there's any irregularities I can just paint over them with yellow and it will just look like it's part of the pattern and the wear and tear. I followed the same modus operandi for the rest of the freehands, which just straight up begs for a montage. So yeah, in case there's still any doubt about how much fun I have doing this, here it is, my final score for the fun factor. I also quickly did the bolter casing and when I say quickly, I mean it. I think it literally took about 3 minutes. All I did was to dab on some scarlet blood over the brown primer and then I darkened the edges with charcoal, which sets up an edge highlight with metallics, which we will cover after the next step. And I also put two layers of dark aluminium on the parts I wanted to treat as metal to have an even coat to work off of. Another factor that I use to compare these approaches is speed. And we are now just under 80 minutes and this is practically done. The only thing left to do is shading the armor and especially the metallics because they're just one layer. But after this and after we bring out some of the edge highlights and some details like the eyes and the lenses were finished. Now let's compare this to the Terminator that I painted for the first video. I painted that one with oils, airbrush pre-shading and a lot of other techniques that are generally considered time savers. This here is just as fast, if not faster, because think about it. Sure, the yellow base color was done after just about 15 minutes, but there was no deep shading done, no weathering whatsoever, and a lot of that ate up the rest of the time it took to finish it. Here we already have a lot of depth in our base colors, battle damage, 
the edges are somewhat defined and the only thing that is really missing is just a wash and a dry brush to make the edges stand out. So I'm not going to give my final verdict on speed yet, but this is definitely up there with the fast techniques. I used Imperial Fist Contrast Paint to give the metallics a yellow golden tint and then give it a second pass without two parts to one part burnt sienna ink mixed in. And I brought back the highlights with a mix of Imperial Fist and Bright Aluminium. Then I finally shaded everything with diluted Burnt Umber ink and I added a bit of dish soap which breaks the surface tension and makes the ink a bit more runny, which helps with forcing it into the recesses. At this point I also shaded the yellows a bit with glazes of diluted burnt sienna, which gives the yellow an intriguing orange discoloration. After this thing was done, I mixed some graphite by AK Interactive into the burnt umber and shaded the rest of the metallics. You could leave the model as is now and it would look great, but we have one little trick up our sleeve to increase the readability and that is painting reflective highlights on the dark edges. This simulates paint having been completely scratched off and the metal surface shining through. From a mini painting point of view, this puts emphasis on the edges, increases the overall contrast in a great way and distinguishes parts within the grey armor so we can better see what's going on with the skull. And it looks better on the table too. So as far as speed goes after I added the last details like the eyes, including a simple OSL effect and some of the lenses, this clocked in at 2 hours and 5 minutes. And I'm confident I can have a finished mini in under 90 minutes with this. If I cared a bit less how it looks. But if you're watching my videos regularly, you know that I'm always putting a bit more effort into these than I would if I were trying to pump out an army. In any case, I know that there is still faster painting techniques than this, but most of them won't yield you a result like this. So overall, I'll give this an 8 out of 10. I've had people show me kill teams that they pumped out in under a day with this technique. From having taught this approach online and in real life, as well as from a ton of feedback from other people that have tried it, I know that there is a small learning curve for the stippling, especially when it comes to sponge related questions, like which sponge to use, how much paint to load it with, how hard to press down, how to create the pattern that looks nice, how much edge to leave and so on. But once you've figured this out, you're off to the races and pumping. And again, all that you need is a regular brush, acrylics and a kitchen sponge. So I'd give it a 9.5 in this category. And last but not least, I know that it's not everyone's cup of tea and it's not necessarily true to the lore of how Space Marine armor works. and how it is kept in tip-top shape by a million of servants. But this is the grim darkness of the future, and if I look at this mini, I believe that there's only war, and this dude has spent centuries fighting in them. And that's why I would give the end result a 9 out of 10. I know I'm biased, but you can of course let me know how you like the result in the comments below. And this is my final score for the grim dark approach. It's really fast, Maybe not, I needed this done yesterday because my life depended on it, but definitely I'll get my kill team done and still have time to teach my kids the art of procrastination, all in one weekend fast. It's so simple to do and it's almost criminal how good it looks for this little effort and narrow learning curve. It's the kind of painting that's so breezy, it makes you wonder if you missed a step. And all of that just contributes to the fun factor, because when painting does feel like you are making progress and the result looks solid. What more can you ask for? Besides maybe a miniature paintbrush with its own motivational stand-up routine. And if you ever needed motivation to finally get your website going, Squarespace got you covered. And honestly, this is the fastest and simple way to create an attractive and functional web presence I have seen so far. No matter what purpose your platform should serve, online portfolio, blog, web store, listing your band's tour dates, you can create the members-only area, integrate your social media feeds, 
or add custom CSS and any code you want. Whether it's your personal hobby vision or a tool for your professional livelihood, if you need it, Squarespace will help you to create it. Start from one of their award-winning, fully customizable templates or create your own layout and start to manage your pictures, audio files and text and create a beautiful and professional looking website in no time. And if you ever need help, Squarespace provides fast and competent support. What are you waiting for? Create your web presence right now. Follow the link in the description or go to squarespace.com Travarian and start your free trial. And using my link will also allow you to grab a 10% discount on your first purchase of a website or domain. If you're new to this series, check out the first episode here. Thanks for watching. Keep pushing that pigment and I'll see you in the next video. This is my favorite way. This is and at the same time another factor that I use to compare these approaches. Another factor which is and more or less weathering and it's